and we're back. While I was away, because nobody watched this series, so I gave up making it, I managed to complete the Criminal Mastermind Challenge during the Double Money Week and bagged myself an impressive $11 million bonus. Geniuses! So that was nice. But then I spent a massive chunk of that on the research during the Double Speed Week. However, I was now absolutely balling. So after a friend told me what time our late night bootical would be, I decided to check out the new Music Locker Nightclub, which is also open during the day for alcoholics who like dancing. I arrived in my favourite clubbing outfit and went inside to see what's up. I'll just need the entry fee. After having a quick boogie, I met up with UFC star Cody Garbrandt. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, it's okay, it's okay. They're with me. Thanks for coming, welcome. Miguel, what do you want? Tequila, champagne, water, gum, anything? Just help yourself, okay? The minimum spend here is insane. Uh, this is my lovely mother. You're going to help my boy, right? That's Jackie. Oh my God, Jackie! Yeah, I'm Jackie. This Thanks. beautiful piece is Kaylee. She's got more fucking followers than the Pope. I don't even know if I'm gonna post this. Cody was weirdly proud of telling me all about how he shags his own mum before each fight. Right, mom? <laughs> right, sweetie. Um, <clears throat> I've also got a big fucking problem right now. Oh, uh, not her. This guy. One Strickler, they call him El Rubio, the blonde Colombian, one of our main suppliers. But somehow, this fucker's managed to get hold of like decades worth of intel on my family. I mean, every business cuts corners, right? But you take some of that shit out of context and the optics can look bad. We were trying to talk yeah, business, but his horny mom kept trying to shank him. Basically, he's trying to play me for a fucking fool. Mom, just chill. I don't know what I'll do if anything happens to him. So, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna let that piece of shit bring down my family, make me look weak in front of my father. I need to get my hands on those files by any means necessary. We were then rudely interrupted by everyone's least favorite bellend, Dave. Hey, this place is fucking mental! Hang on one sec. David! Where's Pops? I thought he was with you. I can't get him out of the bloody box. Sweated off his chops, double drop like a trooper. Okay, I didn't understand a word of that. Dave, come here a second. Jazza! When are we gonna see you throw some shapes? Best tunes in LS right now, mate. Oh, proper oh, yeah. mullet. This is the one I was telling you about? Yeah, we know each other, you all right? We're talking about the island? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been over there, like, four times now. Massive vibe. Dave then told me how El Rubio likes to order his McDonald's. Oh, yeah, the blonde man loves to go large. No expense spared. He also told us about his close relationship with the world's best grinder, but GTA's worst player, the professional. He loves me. Fucking nutter. I mean, I've seen him three days in, gurning like a trout, bottle of bubbly in one hand, AK in the other, chasing some fucking supermodel down the beach on a panther, mate. Crazy seas. Right up my alley. Anyway, that's got me nice and fuzzy. Reckon I'm gonna head back out there and get involved! Let's have it, Mrs. M! <laughs> Cody Garbrandt then dropped the bombshell that I'd have to spend millions of my own money in order to help him. There's this old Russian sub for sale, just been upgraded to the latest specs, 6G, state-of-the-art shit, operated by this guy called Pavel, who's been doing a few drops for us recently. He knows all about the job. He'll be running tech for you guys on the sub. He then wants me to see just how hard his dick had got. Do you feel me? Such a boy. Mom, take it easy, fucking... So after I said my goodbyes to Kaylee, Bye. got absolutely wasted, See you later. I went off to buy my very own submarine. Dude, seriously? Knowing that this would be a stealth operation, I went for the most suitable paint job. Four and a half million dollars later, I now have my very own submarine. I had to then make sure I was going to fit in with being around a world-renowned drug lord, so I went for the Pablo Escobar look. It was now time to check out my brand new toy and meet who would later become my BFF, Pavel. Don't touch anything. Come through here, mind your head. Ah, Capitan, I have been expecting you. Come, welcome aboard. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ho, Ho, H to the O, V. Chief engineer, gunner, radar technician, and cook, huh? Pavel gave me a tour of the Kasaka and detailed all the things I can and can't do. Don't touch this. Don't touch this either. Touch this and we all die. <laughs> no! no, but seriously, 
Ten plus de pan. These your conducts. Now, the Caribbean, huh? Mini Madrazo explained me the details. Pavel then explained to me exactly who El Rubio is. This man you are robbing? Juan Strickler? El Rubio? Cartel boss, cocaine manufacturer, all around bad guy. His little island is better fortified than many countries. The documents will be behind it all, hidden away. This is why you need me. Huh? You want to know what the element of surprise looks like, my friend? You are standing in it! Huh? So excited was Pavel, he let off the biggest fart I'd ever experienced. Here. Huh? Any questions? My first port of call was getting to El Rubio's Island, yes. where I'd meet some dreadful music creators. Kind of music. Adam Port, Rampa, and, and me. You will meet at the executive airport, and off you fly. I will be lurking in the deep, like post-Soviet Kraken, telling you what to do on the radio. Now, whenever you're ready, the bridge is yours, Captain. So before I set off to the island, I custom myself to my new submarine. It was stocked full of amazing food, like vegetable and tomato soups, seafood noodles, and industrial strength toilet cleaner. But even better than that was a schedule planner from 2003, which will come in super handy if ever time travel gets discovered. In any case, I was now off to LSIA to meet up with Dave and the DJs nobody had ever heard of until now. Meet them on the tarmac. You will travel to the island together. I parked on my Kasatka, landed perfectly on the ground without dying at all, Most dangerous drug lord on planet. raced the truck, this takes the biscuit. and arrived at the hangar. And just like every overrated DJ, these guys were followed by a couple of vapid bitches. Hey, is this the right place for the party? I can't believe they're gonna pay us. Hashtag, fuck yeah! <laughs> Lady, so glad you could make it! Come on, let's have some. Mwah. It wasn't long before the shitty DJ stand up. Looking good, man. <laughs> Adam! What's up, Dave? And me! Hey. Beautiful! But there were some special guests that arrived in the form of Jimmy Iovine, DJ Pooh, and legendary producer Dr. Dre. Guess who's back? I hope you brought the music. Tell me you brought the music. Oh, for sure. It's in my phone. But I upset Dr. Dre after I told him his Beats headphones were a load of overpriced bollocks. What the fuck? Shit, Dre. This could be a fucking problem. Feel like this vacation over before the motherfuckers got started. And after realizing that none of them could act, they left. We're gonna send somebody else. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. Right, let's enjoy some of the airline hospitality, eh? Ladies, we are just getting started. <laughs> Just as we arrived, I showed the two dumb bitches my party trick, which involved me spreading my hairy ass and fitting 16 hot dogs in it. Needless to say, they were very impressed. Oh my god, it's beautiful! And then, I just on her face. I'm gonna need a shower. Oh, me too, it's hot! Now you're really gonna start sweating when you see our host. But let's hope he's got enough up his nose he won't smell the deception, eh? I will kill you. Nah, just winding you up. Davey! Welcome to paradise! Ah, Monsieur Rubio! Ah. Hold me blonde, eh? <laughs> kind of music weren't just shitty DJs and producers, but they were also shitty actors. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, we good. Great. The flight was easy, no problems. Oh, amazing. Thanks for having us, Juan. We got some cool <laughs> stuff planned. Right. Really beach party vibes. Yeah, should be sexy. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Not. You have no idea. Oh, Rubio then introduced us to his gimp. Gustavo! Hippie! Told you not to go anywhere. Take our friends to the stage, huh? Show them the setup. Do you think you could do that? Uh, you don't need not to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now run along. After all the hellos and pleasantries, it was now time for us to check out the beach party. This is our ride. Uh, tour manager, you can drive us, right? Go on. At the beach party, there was then yet another legendary music producer. Oh, and there's someone you simply must meet. He's right over here. Where this guy? Yeah. Hey, man. It's my party. Who are you? Hey, I'm Scott Storch. Yeah, that's Scott Storch, yo. Oh, snap. Who the hell is Scott Storch? Yo, he's a d dude that make all the beats and shit, yo. Yeah. Who sent me? I'm the backup because they couldn't make it. You. Uh -huh. Okay, um, but remind me what you... Who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who am I? 
I'm one of the biggest record producers of all time. Scott Storch. Yeah. Oh, oh shit, okay, big time record producer. <laughs> all right, great, great. Not as great as the other guy. Bruh. <laughs> I've been listening to my records your whole yeah, life. Whatever. Um El Rubio really took a shine to Scott and tried his best to get him to be his next boyfriend. Oh no. Are we cool or what? Uh yeah, yeah. I love you, man. <laughs> oh fuck. It's about to get sexy. Petrified of being bummed ragged, Scott then read out a pre-written script. Excuse me. I just want to say a few words. We're all here because of one man. The kindest, most generous man I know. Juan Strickler, El Rubio, my brother. A lot gets written about you on the internet. They talk about cocaine, turf wars, missing journalists. But you know what they never say? <laughs> How big your heart is. You're beautiful. But it was so cringe that it nearly made me vomit. But it's gonna be sick. Stop it, I said, oh, come on. I said, no speeches, eh? You're embarrassing me. He's got a lot of hits from the 2000s, eh? Who's ready to fucking party? Go fucking lunch! I couldn't help but think that maybe these shitty DJs weren't really cut out for the party scene. Despite being a huge Michael Bolton fan, I still had work to do, so I changed it into my Pablo Escobar suit and went off to explore the island known as Cayo Perico, or as others call it, the Salo Preco, or Coya Porco, or Cajun Paprika. You know, by people who can't read or say words correctly. I managed to slip out past the partially sighted guards when Pavel gave me a sit rep update. If a guard sees you from now on, you will get more than finger wagging. Now, based on satellite images, the compound is on the south side of the island. I had to snoop around to see if anyone was up to no good or breaking any laws. Nope, all good here. After running what felt like a billion miles, I finally arrived at El Rubio's compound. Okay, you should be able to see the compound now. I was forced to stare at El Rubio's entrance for about two minutes before Pavel gave me my next orders. Okay. Tower near your current position. He also warned me about the legendary size of a Rubio's penis. If I am right, it should be visible. It will be the highest point on the island. More running, climbing, and then quick maths. I hacked into a Rubio's compound to see what he was up to. Uh, is that a panther in there? Embarrassed. Get it. No, no, oh. no. Oh shit. No. Oh no. <laughs> this will sting. Oh! No, no! Just like your mum on weekends, the pussy was filled with a girthy Latin American. Oh, yeah, yeah, you see? This is a lesson to us all, I think. I continued my snooping and eventually found what Pavel thought was a game old ladies like playing. And bingo! This must be it. We will need the security code. You cannot rely on finding it open like this. Searching the rest of the compound, I found... Cash, gold, a fine art, Rubio's office, an elevator, fingerprint scanner, keypad on the door, and... Compound scoped, I took a little shortcut down from the tower and searched the rest of the island. I came across your dad's gimp cage. This will be your home for a very long time if you are caught. And even got to meet some of the friendly guards. Ooh. Hey, don't touch me, bitch! With ribs broken, feet bleeding, and I bored off my tits, it was now time to go home. Ready to go? Enrique! I was looking forward to a quiet flight back when... Leaving, are we? Yeah, no problem. We are off ski. Not even going back for one more tune. Nah, not even a little one. But he soon changed his mind when I told him what an utter prick I think he is and hated his guts since Riches to Rags episode 10. Now what? I'm staying, Keith. With Nobed Dave left behind, I made my way back to Los Santos. Anticipating that the prep missions would be primarily in the city, I parked up my submarine, bought myself an up anatomizer, and spent the next two hours pushing it 30 foot closer to the city in order to save myself two minutes in time completing the preps. <laughs> 
sub in position, I was ready to start. We will need equipment for getting into the basement and cracking the safe where the documents are kept. The first prep mission had me go in here to kill these, then hack this so I could go here to collect this and hack here. The next prep meant disguising myself as a construction worker and subtly removing a cutting torch from their site. But that sounded a bit too rubbish, so I blew everyone up and just took it. Then I had to infiltrate an office block, which was luckily only guarded by deaf and blind security. Okay, this shipping will be kept separate from their regular weapons. Look for a gun locker somewhere, it may be hidden. In my experience, the kind of people to have cache of unmarked weapons will try very hard to kill you when you steal them. Those who attempted last time were successful, but they made one crucial mistake. To get the safe code, I had to go to the casino, pick up a key card using magic, I was correct. It was in the truck, huh? locate the head of security, murder a bunch of people, as we say in Russia, there are many ways to break the egg. If you take out the security quietly, use the photograph I sent you to identify the man, and steal Leo Nas X's safe code then teleporting myself outside. While I was at the casino, it seemed like a good idea for some spinny wheel time. Now back to the preps. To make the finale a little easier, I had to stop a delivery of armor being sent to the island. So as per usual, I murdered a load of people. And blew up a boat. Then I had to choose my approach vehicle. I was planning on going in stealth, so I thought the biggest and slowest plane in the world would be perfect. I was advised by Pavel to turn out the lights, but not having any night vision goggles meant shooting in the pitch black and hoping for the best. I was now going to need a pilot. In order for him to help me, I was asked to pay a visit to some loan shops and ask them politely to wipe off his debt. Operations completed, it was now time for the finale. But contrary to his usual self, Pavel seemed a little stressed. I guess we are ready. We have a screen, so let's look at the fucking screen. See? No buttons. 
Wanting to make sure that we were ready, Cody Carbrandt paid us a visit, and he was suitably impressed by the massive dump Pavel had left in the toilet. Look at this fucking shit! This is fucking cool! This is some space age shit! Not being used to how a submarine works, Cody started pissing about with Pavel's workstation. What do these do? Cody really wanted revenge on El Rubio, so suggested we shove a 12 inch dildo up his ass. The more we hit El Rubio where it fucking hurts, the better, huh? Okay, Mr. Madrazo, we should set off shortly. Cool, yeah, cool. Uh, just wanted to say, real quick, uh. To be sure we were motivated enough, Cody gave us the best pep talk of all time. Go get him, team! Okay, uh... I'm sure the Nazis would have won World War II if they had Cody as their leader. Good luck! My god. They just keep getting younger and dumber. Well, I guess we're as ready as we're going to be. You know, shall we do this, Captain? One day I too will go up the ladder. But not today. We'll be at the drop, Ricky King. Up and at him. How is the view from up there? From satellite images, it looks like the party is finished. Let us go and make Mr. Rubio's hangover a little worse, yes? He will wake up to an empty vault. Mini Madrazo's documents gone, and no clue as to the culprit, except for the faint smell of red caviar. <laughs> My first port of call was stealing bundles of tin foil from a hangar. Very heavy. I then disguised myself as a local football player to avoid detection and made my way to El Rubio's compound. Alright, playtime is finished. As soon as we get into the compound, the real work begins. Stealing a keycard was utterly pointless, as despite security being a top priority, you could just punch the pad for it to unlock the door. Before robbing the place, I had to look at what the Panthers' next meal would be. So far, so good. Now things get interesting. And remember, you see something you like, you help yourself. Then like a ninja in ballet shoes, I crept past this guard and stole his really loud keys. I then raided his Jesus wall safe Played a fingerprint matching game on the original Game Boy. Another fingerprint scanner here. Okay, standard procedure with the tool. Cycle through the fragments and match them up to the target print. And then I just had to dial in a safe code to steal the goodies. Which had been swapped from a bingo card to the 12 inch metal dildo. Getting out was just as easy as getting in by punching stuff. Now all that was left was to steal a bike. Avoid the killer bushes and jump off the island. Back on home soil, the guard recognized me as world famous YouTuber Beatsdown. Hold it right there. Okay, you're good to go. Cody Garbrandt was here. understandably excited to see me again. Look at this. <laughs> the perfect end to a party. But not everyone was, as this bitch recalled the Alex Baldwin video I made after he shot all those people on set. Asshole. Come on, let's go sit over here. Fuck. Cody was extremely pleased to see I'd stolen El Rubio's giant dildo. Fuck. Excellent. Fucking wait till my dad hears about this. But instead of telling his dad about the dildo, he instead confessed he'd been shagging his own mum. Yeah, I, I did it. Dad? Dad? Dad, hello? Opening up El Rubio's dildo, Cody found some rather private photos that he had been stashing. I don't even know if I want to look at these. No, 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 no. Ooh. What can I get you? <laughs> some fresh OJ? Coconut water? Oh, no, thanks. Nah. <laughs> Shit! Fuck! You're hardcore, Darling. Mrs. M. Uh, Darling, so what is it? It's nothing now. Hmm? Nothing at all. 
It's over. Thank you. <laughs> But wait, that wasn't all. Pavel wants me to go and rob El Rubio again. Soon we can pay him another visit, I think. And then another. And another. And this time we will not be working for Mini Madrazo. Just you and me, huh? <laughs> so I stole a plane. You have got the plane. I made my way back to the island. I was super impressed with the seatbelts in the bellum, as even flying sideways with the door open, I still managed to stay inside. Much like myself, the guards get really pissed if you're not very punctual. Why can't you assholes be on time for once, eh? After some more quick maths, I'd hacked into the security feed once again, and this time found... Look, in the display case, the statue. Is it a panther covered in sapphires? I do not know what it is trying to say, but it is saying it very loud. Oh, wait, that's it, that's it. It's saying, please steal me. Before I left the island, I stumbled across some washing powder from the 80s. Ah, I am familiar with this chemical. Processing. It has interesting side effect. You put this in the water supply, every guard on the island will be distracted. As we say in Russia, you cannot wipe your ass and shoot your gun at the same time. Good work. If you need a toilet, go now. There's about to be a long line, huh? And not one of them able to point their gun straight. I hope the free ride back to the airport and once again headed back to Los Santos. All the preps were pretty much the same, except this time I was going to take the long fin boat approach. I had planned to get a phantom wedge to help me pick one up, but despite offering Warstock millions, they wouldn't allow me to buy one. Racist. Instead, I had to travel halfway across the map to pick up another truck. But it didn't really go to plan, as the apparently indestructible gate deflected the sticky bomb and blew up my flying bike with homing missiles on it. <laughs> Realistic, I know. I managed to set a truck free and picked up the long thing. However, the car decided to blow up right next to me for no reason. Which then set my truck ablaze. Travelling all the way back to the yard, I picked up another truck. I then performed the magic trick where I made the entire long fin boat disappear. and then reappear when I got back in the truck. Longfin delivered, it was now time to relieve El Rubio of his pretty little panther. The main reason I wanted to get the Longfin boat was to show off this amazing boat jump trick, which took me straight into the grounds of the compound. Experience and heavy munitions. I then got to run through this invisible tree. Popping this guy in the face meant he dropped the key codes. And then showed this juggernaut who's boss next? We go underground. before grabbing the gate keys for the basement. I played some more Game Boy, he has a fingerprint scan here too. cut the glass cabinet, and yoinked out the panther. Yoink! A Rubio's Fiat 500 was no match for my five stickies. that I snuck out the door. Unfortunately, due to how awful the secondary loot was, it meant a risky trip to the North Dock, where I then got spotted. Well, well, judging from their guns, it sounds like Mr. Rubio is reaching for his helicopter again. With the high scoring tits up, I sped to the hut for cover. Grab some neatly packaged grass. Perform the cool jump for no reason. And then some packages of tin foil. With my loot bag full, I popped this driver in the face. Stole his boat. And 
sailed off like a total badass. After swapping my dirty laundry for an envelope full of fan mail, I collected my well-earned dosh. Now that Cody and I are best buds, we celebrated by eating a lime together. All that was left to do was the customary parkour. And it ended with the perfect metaphor for riches to rags.